Hello, my name is Paul Downs. I have been practicing in banking and accountancy type disputes for over 20 years. And this Qubit talk is called How to Analyze Company Accounts. You know the situation. Somebody hands you or you're working through some papers and you come across a set of company accounts and you look at it and you think, where on earth do I start? But it is very important that you know where to start because this sort of thing comes up time and time again. If you're thinking about applying for security for costs or you're resisting security for costs on behalf of a company or you're looking at the valuation of a business or you might be involved in a fraud case and the fraudsters use company structures to hide assets or just you're looking into the facts of the case and you want to understand a little bit more about the details of forensic tool. Now I've got a set of accounts here they're pretty typical. It's a case I've been working on recently that are about 30 pages long. So how do you analyze them? Well, four things, only four things you need to know. Number one, ask yourself what the business does. It might be in the accounts, but you might know anyway. But that will tell you the sort of things to expect. What sort of assets are you expecting to find? What sort of sales level are you thinking you'll find? What would the stock look like? What are the debtors going to look like? That sort of thing. So just spend three or four minutes just thinking about what you expect to find in the accounts before you even open them. The second thing is you want to find the balance sheet. The balance sheet is the most important part and it'll be on a single page in 30 pages. And it's your key and your route in to decoding the information in this document. So we see in the balance sheet straight away it's got two columns of figures. The right-hand column is the previous year, the left-hand column is the most recent year. In this instance, the right-hand column 2018, the left-hand column 2019. So by working down the balance sheet, we can see how our line items have changed in the 12 months between those dates. Now, the balance sheet itself is split into three sections, and always try and think of a balance sheet in those three sections. The top part are the assets fixed assets and current assets, but let's think of them together as the total assets of the business. So the fixed assets are 7.8 million and the current assets 2.1 million. Together, total assets of 9.9 million. The liabilities section, helpfully on one line, is 8.9 million. So that means if we take the liabilities from the assets, we're left with a net figure at the bottom, you can see, of 1,005,000, 000, 1 million, roundabout. The third part of the balance sheet is at the bottom. And there you see it's headed up capital and reserves. And the two most important lines in the capital and reserve section is the share capital and the profit and loss account. The share capital is what the shareholders brought into the business on day one to start the whole thing off. And the profit and loss account tells us what's happened since day one. And if we add up those sections at the bottom, we come to a total of 1005. Now that's an amazing coincidence, you might think. How is it that the net assets are exactly the same figure as the capital and the reserves? Well, the answer to that is that they are just expressing the same thing. And for that, I need some props. So by the magic of television, we have here Ken and Barbie's coffee shop. And it's got everything we need to create the illusion of a business. We have the assets, so we've got the stock, we've got the coffee machine, we'll have some uh, coffee cups and things like that, and we've got some cash, that's the assets. And then we've got some bills to pay, so they're the liabilities of the business, the second part of the balance sheet. And then we've got Ken and Barbie, they are the owners, they're, they represent the sort of capital and reserve section of the balance sheet. So let's put some numbers on that. So the assets, we'll say, are worth £10,000. Uh, we'll take away from that the liabilities uh, of £5,000. And that equals the net result of £5,000. So the reason that this part of the balance sheet is the same and balances with the result of this part of the balance sheet is, be is not a coincidence. It's because they're basically expressing the same thing. The assets minus the liabilities will always equal the owner's share. Now, the reason that we split the bottom part of the balance sheet between capital and profit is because as the business trades, so imagine this coffee shop trades for a whole year, they buy in coffee and they sell it, 
hopefully they're selling it at a greater price than they're buying it in for because that's how they'll make a profit. So as the business turns over in the course of the year, the net assets should go up. And the, the amount of that increase in net assets should be attributable to the profits made. So on the balance sheet, what we see is the assets going up more than the liabilities. Let's say they go up to 15,000 and the liabilities only go up to 7,500. And then the net figure is 7,500. And the, the increase from the 5,000 to the 7,500, that is the profit that the business has made in that 12 months. So we said goodbye to Ken and Barbie and their coffee shop. Let's have a look at how that works in our balance sheet. If we look at the balance sheet we were looking at previously and we focus on the profit line, and you'll see that the profit has gone from minus 5646, so minus 5.6 million in 2018, to minus 5.8 million in 2019. In other words, the business has made a loss of 249,000 in that 12 month period. And that loss is attributed, and we would expect the assets, the net assets, to have gone down. But what's happened to the net assets in the period? If we look at the bottom part of the balance sheet, we see that there's actually been an increase in the net assets. Why has that happened? Well, if we look down the capital and reserve section again, we see that the share capital line has gone up from 2,000 and 2,000, 2 million or thereabouts, to 5.9 million. In other words, an increase of 3.8 million. So what's happened in this business is it's made a small loss, but the shareholders have put more money in. The loss has taken the net assets down by about a quarter of a million, but the new shares have brought the value back up by 3.8 million. The net result of that is an increase in the net assets of 3.8 million. So if we combine those two elements, we have the loss has created a decrease in the net assets of 249 and the new share money coming in has increased the net assets by 3.8 million. The net result of those two movements is an overall increase in the net assets of 3.6 million. The next thing we need to do is look at the quality of the assets. That's the fourth thing in the process. And the start at the top, the assets here we see are fixed assets. There are some investment properties and there's some investments. The properties should be worth what it says in the balance sheet and they may be worth more because the values in the balance sheet are recorded at the value they were when the properties were bought. So it could be that if the properties were bought many years ago, they'll have gone up in value. The investments, well, we don't know what they are. They may be very valuable. It may just be an investment in something that's a loss-making company. So that's a question mark. The cash and the debtors are usually reliable assets. You won't get quite 100% of the debtor value, but you should get quite a lot. Stock, on the other hand, probably not worth a great deal if the business collapses. So looking at this balance sheet, the critical line in the balance sheet is, are these investments worth what it says? I had a case once, a fraud case, where a fraudster had buried the value in a series of companies at the bottom of a company that was way below this one. And it looked, when you looked at the balance sheet, as though the overall value of the business was millions and millions. But as you drilled down through the investments, you found at the very bottom company, it was in fact a worthless shell. So that's it, it's easy, anybody can do it. Four stages, what does the business do? Number two, find the balance sheet, look at the net assets. Number three, look at the profit and loss. Is it going up and down? or down and then work out what that's done with the net assets and fourthly analyze the quality of the assets. Anybody can do it. Thank you for watching.